Hello, hello, hello everyone. Thank you for tuning in. I am Jay Lee. This is Jay Lee's Corner. This is my late review, honey, for Marriage Boot Camp Hip Hop Edition. Okay, or we all view stars. We don't care which one it is, but it is season 17, episode 2 and stuff. Do not forget to subscribe to my channel and buck on my whole J Bird. J Bird. Dun, 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 and all that greatness and stuff. Let's get ready to do it. Okay. Inhale. Wait, I didn't inhale right. <laughs> okay. Inhale. And exhale. Inhale. And exhale. And remember to relax to relate, to release, and to censor yourself. Because what? It's a lot going on in the world today and stuff, okay? And yes, you can breathe wrong, okay? You have to make sure to really get it up in there, okay? Do not forget to also like this video, to comment in the comment section. You can also share it on your social media by hitting the share button. You also want to hit the notification bell because it lets you know when I have new content up and all of that. You can follow me on IG and or Twitter at J underscore leads underscore corner. I always post uh, when I have new content up on my social media. Um, I share the things. So again, you should always be following me on my social media. Okay. Um, let's get started. So we see, you know, you know, Tahiri and Vado still fussing a little bit because she's still upset that he called her thirsty or thought pocket or whatever you called it. I was still wrong. And she has every right to be upset. Um, we see Phaedra Tahiri talking down here in the kitchen and Phaedra brings up, you know what I'm saying, the reason she has not had sex with Medina. It's because she's still not sure if she really wants to be in a relationship with him. And she was like, really? After six months? Because see, you're like, like, you've been with him six months. How can you, really? After six months? I'm, I would have had the same question. And she said, well, yeah, because you know, I just, you know, I just, I don't know yet. And to hear you see him say, I would rather, you know what I'm saying, test the milk than buy the cow. I said, you know what? I mean, who wants to buy a broken cow? I need to be sure the milk works. Okay, I need to be sure that the milk comes out the right way. Because if not, you bought a broken cow. But Fraser said, I just don't want to have another mistake that affects my bank account. I mean, look, I don't know what happened between her and Apollo and how much money that she ended up paying that man. But I guess it was a lot because she's still acting all scary or whatever. So we see for the day, okay, it's, it's like the episode is when they have to like write stuff down about each other. So they separate them into two pairs, like all the men on one side, all the women on the other. And y'all have to write down topics that you resent your couple for, okay? Now we did see everybody's answers. We've seen some of the people's answers, but we don't need everybody no way. So, baby little Divine, you know, who was uh, Hazel Z's boyfriend, says her attitude, how she holds grudges, how she comes at him, and her lack of respect. Well, she's a thought. Okay. Um, Vado brings up again, you know, her attitude, the way she, the, the wall she has up, her accusing him of being a player, and how she causes him to be insecure. Vado, what kind of man is you? He must have a little dick. Anyway, because only little dick men act that way. Only little dick men. Um, Corrupt brings up how she won't listen. She's always upset. Her attitude, her insecurities. I say, okay, Corrupt, but think about this. But Corrupt also looks drunk. I'm like, is he still drunk from yesterday or is he freshly, newly drunk today? We don't know. Now we then see Tahiri brings up how he called her a, th uh, uh, no, called her a thirst bucket yesterday. How he makes her consider other people. I don't know how that's a bad thing unless he wants her to consider other people when it doesn't really pertain to her. Like, you should care about other people, but at the same time, sometimes you don't have to give fucks. I, I don't know. Um, also, how she mothers him um, and trying to make her be the old Harlem Tahiri. I mean, at the end of the day, we are who we are. Like, I'm still J. Lee, you know what I'm saying, from Linwood and Hayeswood. It can still go down if it has to. But I feel like the person I'm with, no, that's the old me. And you don't want to bring that me out. 
Okay, anyone who wants the old me to be out on a consistent basis don't need to be with me. Now, if you know about the old me and you know if need be, she can come on out and you were cautious about that, okay, then we cool. Okay, uh, um, Tony brings up how he falls off the wagon with the drinking, um, how things were stolen from their home, um, him having, you know, him having no repercussions from his actions, and how he fucked off his money. I feel like, you know, she said, you know what, um, I guess he would have friends over, and things be missing or whatnot, you know, she brings up, I don't live a life like I'm a teenager, I'm not a kid, I can't be around here, you know what I'm saying, fucking off my money. Then why are you with him? You, If you've been with him for three years, I feel like... Like, Corrupt didn't earn his money within the past three years. Corrupt earned his money 15, 20 years ago. So, if he has recently messed his money up, he ain't had that much to begin with. I, I, I'm just, in the death case, why are you with him? I don't understand why she's with him. Even though she likes to bring up, well, you know, when he's not drinking, he's great. But it seems like he ain't never not drinking. If he only not drinking for when he wake up, until he gets something to drink, then that's not a good thing at all. She like when well, he was sober for a little bit of time or whatever, and then he fought the wagon. Well, clearly he has a whole drinking problem, and you either can deal with it or you cannot. But I feel like she, I don't, I just don't know why she would have. It's weird. So we then see they make them go outside and do their whole rap thing. Where they have them, you know, take what they written down and make it a rap. And now they rap battle each other. Girl, I say, why do y'all look? No. No, I hate weak ass rap battles. I don't like awkward ass rap battles. It irks all my nerves. Don't do this just because this is a hip hop edition. Hazel E ain't no real rapper, okay, at all. We don't want to hear her rap. I mean, corrupt is, but corrupt drunks want to hear that. G Willie's a singer, and I don't think he's a writer, but let me go. In, he, I think they say he wrote some song, but I mean, not for himself. So, Fader brings out, this is out of my comfort zone. I just, you know, I'm not a rapper. I can do a jazz by this, but I cannot rap. I can, I can do a funeral. And, and said, I was a girl, we don't want you, uh, you to, to do that with us, not today. Now, Corrupt tell Tony, I'm going to go easy on you because I want to be able to sleep safely tonight. That was smart. And then Tahiri brings up in her rap how Vado is the most broke guy she's ever dated. I'm like, that's rude. He said, I'm not broke. I can show you my bank statement. She's like, well, okay, well, you broke by the standards of why I used to date. I'm like, but you was with Joe Budden. He ain't rich. At all. I mean, he look like girl and stuff. So, you know, we see who, who all goes up there, okay? We see Tahiri and Vada up there, you know what I'm saying? And she read from a little thing or whatever. Again, they all was getting on my nerve because it was fake, fake, fake. But I guess they had fun, okay? We then had, you know, Hazel Z and Baby Boy Divine or whatever. I still feel like Hazel Z needs to get the fuck on somewhere. And we do not need her on our televisions, okay? Who else do we have? Um... Oh, Willie and uh, uh, Shonda. I mean, Shonda was trying to have sex with Willie. I think that's what it was. Uh, she, but you know, but that, they're the only married couple, so I respect their um, togetherness. Okay, they're, they're legally married, so I mean, all they'll be with the dating. Um, corrupt and Tony. I mean, corrupt. They're horrible considering he's supposed to be, you know, a lyricist who used to do rap battles. But again. That was 20 or 30 years. Well, not 30, because I'm 38. So, that had to be at least 20 years ago. And I think his drunkenness has definitely messed with his talents, okay? Because I'm like, I, he, 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 he looks like somebody drunk uncle up there trying to rap. A hip, a hop, a, that's what he looked like. That's, that's, that's what it was. Um, now, Medina and Phaedra. Medina did the best, okay? He came out really rapping, okay? I was like, oh, Medina. Hey, Medina, you know, it made me respect Medina a bit more. I said, oh, he's talented. First of all, looking at Medina right now, he looks like a tall glass of something that a, a woman would want to drink. I don't get how she could be dating that man for six months. And he seems to really be into her and she wanted to jump his bones. I would have at least jumped his bones once. Okay, jumping that man bones once. Shouldn't cost you no money. I'm not saying marry that man, but girl, taste that milk. Okay, or at least let that milk take you. One of the look, get some enjoyment out of that cow. Okay, I'm a girl, I'm just saying. 
but he 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 really did good okay you know i don't like um you know nine rapping rap battles but he you know won if it was a competition or whatever so we then see that part is over whatnot and they're like on a little break or whatnot and so everybody no, it was everybody, everybody except maybe Vada wasn't out there. I think maybe Corrupt wasn't out there. And uh, Tahiri, it's hot outside. They in Cali. It's hot outside and Tahiri had a jacket on. So she unzipped her jacket. Now, under her jacket, she had a little bralette. Okay. Now, where's the picture, Tahiri? This is what, this is her under the jacket. And so she unzipped her jacket. Okay. And then Hazel Z had a whole issue with that. Okay. Would you unzip your jacket for you? You can't, God, you can't be having your breasts out around the men. You know, you can't be doing that. And I'm like, bitch. All y'all are out here with ass and titties out. What you fussing for? I'm like the fact that Phaedra has on a whole uh, see-through top and a bra. And all Tahiri did was unzip her jacket. And again, she had a bralette on. And a bralette is what you wear under a jacket or shirt if you may take off your top. Okay, women wear that by itself all the time. So I was like, what the fuck is Hazel Z talking about or whatever? And so... Tahiri like, well, girl, you, girl, be quiet, okay? Look, it's a bralette or whatever. My titties are that out, and it's hot out here. Leave me be, girl. Leave me be. Um, and she then brings up, like, you out here talking shit, and you out here, you don't have no pants on. Hazel Z had on, like, a wrestler's outfit, okay? I thought, I don't have a whole picture of it. But it was a whole, like, little wrestler fit that, and she like, you don't even have pants on, and we can see your pussy print. Um... This is the best photo I have of what Hazel had on. So Hazel don't have on no bra, and she doesn't have on underwear. But she had on this little one piece that it it, it wasn't no. To hear it was more dressed than her. Okay, let's just say that. But again, to hear you do like I would have been hot, hot in that outfit too. So I get why she unzipped her jacket. But the fact I'm like, what is you talking about? Don't nobody want to see all that. Now all the ladies agree like, but you out here, girl, in that onesie. We can see your pussy print. And she, what? Y'all can see my what? I I didn't know that. And so, Hazel and Devon walks away. Because Hazel feels stupid. Because she is stupid, okay? We then see Hazel, because Vada was in the house sleep. But when he wakes up, comes outside or whatever, Hazel, well, you know, Tahiri was sitting outside or whatever with her titties out. And I'm like, why would you lie? She was not outside with her titties out. And Vado is such a dumbass. He believes her. Mainly because big boy, baby boy Divine or whatever co-signs the bullshit that his mistress uh, Hazel Z has said or whatever. And I'm like, both of y'all are some messy bitches. Both of y'all is some messy, messy bitches. And Hazel is aware that Vado is insecure about what Tahiri does. So Hazel Z was definitely... Trying to cause some bullshit, stirring the whole pot or her messy ass, okay? And Vado then says to Hazel, see, I don't like that. You know, she can't be doing that or whatever. And in his confessional, he brings about, you know, I want a classy woman. You know what I'm saying? What she did was out of line. I'm looking like the fact that Vado didn't just say, oh, okay, and then go talk to Zahiri pisses me off. But we all know. Vado should know Hazel E is a messy ass zealous um liar and she is so we leave that bill what now so they then have all the couples come outside and they made these poster boards that has all the things that they written down earlier on the little poster boards and they have to like smash them with hammers you know they can pick which issue they want to like you know smash or whatever and so Shauna brings up how, you know, with her and Willie, how Willie cheated on her the first month of their marriage. Girl, really? And she said how, um, you know, so me complaining about him cheating, it's a build up of things more so than he just recently cheated. But this is my thing. Willie may not have recently cheated, but Willie has always consistently cheated. If he has been cheating since the first month of your marriage 12 years ago, and we know for a fact he at least cheated the same year that y'all went to counseling, bitch, he is a consistent cheater. Okay, he has showed you a pattern, and you have stayed. That's your choice. I ain't knocking you. But don't act as if, oh my God, I, I want him to stop cheating. He ain't gonna stop. 
anyone who has consistently cheated your whole marriage for 12 years, he's not going to stop. He may get smarter and, and learn how to cheat better. He's not going to stop cheating because you, you've helped this man create this consistent pattern of consistently cheating on you. Girl, it's, 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 it's foolish, okay? Now, when we see Tony and Corrupt go up to the board or whatever, they both seem angry. Corrupt is an angry alcoholic, yes, okay? But Tony is also an angry person. And I can't say that her consistent built-up anger is based on Corrupt's consistent drinking. Because if someone is consistently drinking and making you consistently angry, you should leave. If you stay, then again, you enable their behavior. But I digress. So, you know, she break up the little thing or whatnot. You know, she take her hammer and hit the board. You know what I'm saying? And they're, supp they're supposed to take the hammer and hit the board. Hit, hit, hit. To break things. That's, that was the point. That's what everybody else did. That's the point of the thing. Everyone has seen. That's what you go up and do. Now, Corrupt, who is clearly still intoxicated. Okay, he goes up. And you can see he's also upset. He then kind of backs up. Fat, maybe fat to 10 feet. And I'm like, is he trying to get a running start? Like, what is going on here? And then he kind of runs up to, or, or walks fast to the board. And then he throws the hammer at the wall. Now, when he does that, the um, assistant director dude come corrupt. No, you can't. Do, we told you, do not throw the hammer. Like, that's against the rules for safety. Okay, you know what? No more. This is done. This is dumb. I'm like, first of all, did none of y'all notice that he, who gives a drunk man a hammer? Even if you give him a hammer with, with safety goggles and gloves, you should not ever give a drunk person a, a weapon. Okay, and the reason they said it was a uh, safety thing was because earlier when you saw them taking the hammer to the wall, it didn't instantly break through so if you throw the hammer because the hammer can easily bounce back it could have bounced back and hit anybody and then someone could have got hit with them hammer but again y'all chose to give alcoholic a god dang old hammer stupid and they're like you know corrupt you have to listen to us i'm like i don't think <laughs> <laughs> you, you you don't give drunk people weapons. You you just don't. You don't give them keys. You don't give them money because they then go buy more alcohol or whatever. They're just things that you don't do. And I know this because again, my ex was a full fledged stealing, lying, thieving alcoholic. Okay. Oh yeah, I got a nurse. Anyway. So, we then see they stop that part or whatever. When they go to the other side of the board, they broke through. They see on the other side, it's photos of themselves. And so, they have literally destroyed themselves with the issues they have with one another. You know, Fader brings up. No, Fader was caught trying to piece together her to make it look more pretty. See, that's that bullshit. How she wants things to have this, this picture of perfectness. And it's like, girl... We saw the hammer go through things, so if, if it's put back together, you did that shit, okay? We see Willie, who brings up how he sees on his, you know, there are all these pieces missing from Shauna's face, but she's still smiling. Meaning, through all the bullshit that she goes through, she still keeps a smile on her face, even though, you know, is their holes all through their marriage. Um, Tony brings up how she see the cor corrupt toss the hammer through his mouth because that's his issue. Sometimes he talk too damn much or he drink too damn much or whatnot. But drunk corrupt brings up, I don't like how she looks at me, okay? I don't like how she sees me, okay? Because I'm a man. And I'm not, you are a man. A drunk one, okay? Now we then see, okay, game is over. Okay, everybody can go back in the house. But Dr. Ish then asked to speak to corrupt. The fact that corrupt was sitting up there. Okay, and the way I feel like he was sitting there looking, I said he looked like someone's old drunk uncle, and we trying our best to get him into rehab. Uh, just please, go, just, uh, just go to rehab. Okay, can you please go? Legs crossed, you know, baggy clothes, very thin. Okay, uh, come on now. You know, just stop the drinking. Uh, that was this kind of conversation. You know, he brings up how you're saying, I know everyone here has issues. I'm not saying that, you know, no one else here has issues. However, you know, we realize how you have been drinking a lot since you've been here, whatever. And you don't realize that you can lose Tony if you don't get a control of your drinking. Can you just cut it down a little bit, okay? I ain't gonna lose her. I ain't gonna lose You could, okay? I mean, he won't because she ain't gonna run nowhere. But still, I digress. You know, she gonna stay there and be angry. He gonna stay there and be drunk. 
So he said, well, you know, can you just cut down your drink and, and, your, and your anger a little bit? You, you want me to do that, Dr. Ish? He's like, if, if you could, I, it would be greatly appreciated. You know what I'm saying? If you can just try not to drink any liquor, like just drink beer. Corrupt said, okay, I can, I can do that. You know, that's fine. And I like how Dr. Ish made a point in saying, you know, what Corrupt is 100% one hundred percent an alcoholic, but with alcoholics, you cannot have them quit cold turkey because, one, it makes them physically ill, and, two, it usually makes them drink more or they just sneak liquor. I told her before, my ex, who was a whole full-fledged alcoholic, would get drunk in the shower. He would literally have bottles of liquor in the shower, and it was because the steam, I wouldn't smell it. Because it was thin, he would drink it or whatever, and then he would like, girl, he would sneak the bottle, girl, it was crazy. But again, because he didn't want to go cold, tur cold turkey. So, like, it suggests, like, the bank thing they do at his facility, because he also treats people for, for um, um, alcoholism, how they can manage their drinking by, okay, you can't drink liquor, but you can drink wine. Or you can't drink either, you can drink beer. Because it makes, it helps their system wean you know, themselves off of the stuff, whatever. So, corrupt, say, I can do that. I can just drink beer. I say, I don't think, girl, I will sell so We'll see. So, we dance in the room. I don't think to hear you how Hazel uh, Z came and said, you know, she was outside with TikTok. She's like, what? I can't, what? He even says how Hazel was looking out for him by telling him about Tahiri. And she's like, are you fucking serious? Like, fuck you. Like, you should have told her to keep my fucking name out of her mouth. Like, I'm saying, that's something to, to address with me. You don't sit there and have a conversation with her about me. And you, I, look, man, look. If my dude ever, ever sat and had a conversation about me with someone talking shit about me, I'm beating both your ass. It's going down immediately, okay? But I digress. Now, she do tell him, like, you should never, you know, um, let another woman speak about your girl like that it, it, it shouldn't happen that way and it should not he tells her how hazel says that she was uncomfortable by how to hear it. i'm like what hazel was in a goddamn wrestling suit with no bra and no panties okay she her chest her her cleavage was out too phaedra was in a see-through top and a bra she said, no, 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 no. She told us that you said that you had an issue in saying as if y'all have had some kind of sad conversation about me. And Hazel did say that. So for Hazel to say, oh, Tahiri, well, you know, Vado, this is this issue with you. And then she goes to Vado and then say, yeah, I felt some kind of way about how she was dressed. But means what? Hazel is what? A shit-starting thought pocket, okay? Anyway, you know, they had that conversation or whatever and Tears is mad because he won't, you know what I'm saying, defend her and he ain't shit. So we then see Judge Lynn Toller comes in with her opinions about each couple, okay? She brings up with Hazel Z and baby, baby, baby boy Devon, how she can see or she can tell that Devon has love for Hazel just by how, no matter where she at by herself, eventually he comes and like come, and comes around her or whatever. But he's consistently like seeking her out to be near her. I mean, that can be why she thinks he's a cloud cage because he always wants to be around her or he can really love her. I mean, look. Look, he knocked her up. They're a couple now, so we shall see how long it lasts, though. She tells Hazel, you know, you can't, you know, um, be upset at how young he is. I'm saying, you picked him. You need to get over the fact that he's only 20, whatever, and not 30, whatever, because, again, you picked him. You cannot keep treating him as, a, as he's a kid. You know what I'm saying, because, again, you picked that man knowing how old he was, okay? Now, for Willie and Shonda, she brings up how, you know what I'm saying, she, Dr. Ish mentioned something, and then she kind of, uh, elaborated on it or whatever. She brings up how, you know, your daughter will live the life that you give your wife. Meaning your daughter will end up picking a man like you because it's what your daughter has seen. And that makes Willie cry because Willie know he not shit. Okay, he knows how bad he treated his wife. So he's like, I can't imagine my daughter being with a man like me. I mean, you know, we'll be better. Now with Corrupt and Tony, you know, she tells them how... Look, where they at? I gotta, cause, look. Corrupt and Tony both look like a couple who have been drinking and drugging together for like 15, 20 years. Okay? Like, period. They, they look, I have relatives who they remind me of back in the day. I'm leave that be. But again, they both look bad. Okay? She looked 
just as haggard as he do. I mean, he looked more haggard than her, but again, they still look like a worn out couple, okay? Like a worn out pair of shoes, okay? Like a whole deal though that's been deal though too much, is what they look like. So, she brings up how, you know, at times, you know, boot camp was more about an individual than a couple. And how if they are broken and they come into it broken, that it doesn't mean coming there will make anything whole. It can just be two broken pieces. And she tells them both, like, I want both of y'all to look at yourself before you worry about how to eat, how the other one is doing and needs, to, you know, to change and whatnot. Because they both have issues that they're not addressing and they're both trying to blame the other one. Now, for the most part, I do feel like Tony seems to think she doesn't have an issue. The fact that she does have an anger issue, but she blames her anger on corrupt, to me, is bullshit. Yes, he's a part of your, your, your anger, but you still is angry. Like, you be sitting up there angry when he ain't even there. How you angry How you angry about someone who's on your face? I don't get it. It's people who I'm angry at, too, in life, but if they're not near me, I give no fucks. She consistently looks like she's being tormented, no matter what day or time it is, again... You know, she allows the bullshit that he gives her to go on. So, in that, you are a part of the mess. Period, sis. Okay? And now, for Phaedra and Medina, she brings to Phaedra, like, you know, I see a boss in you. Like, I see boss, but I see fear. Okay? Because it's easy to be a boss. Because you're in charge of everything. But are you willing to be frightened and be fear and be scared in order to be with him, meaning you were scared to, to be with him, but you need to be with him and accept that fear. Phaedra brings up how you know it was just a, I went through a horrible divorce. You know what I'm saying? I then didn't date for over four years after my divorce, and now I'm just scared. You know what I'm saying? And Melina brings up how yeah, she's scared and now I'm paying the price for it. I feel like Phaedra, as a logical woman who is very smart, for you to hold on with what you went through with Apollo, to me, you're a bad lawyer. Because you can't move past shit. You're a bad mortician because you can't move past shit. You are a bad person, sort of, kind of. If you can't move bad, move past one bad marriage, when that man has already went to prison, got remarried, and is living his life, and you up here on marriage boot camp, ain't fucked sexy dude next to you, I'm scared because of what me and Apollo went through. Girl, that has been how many years ago? Hot girl. Look, look. Mm -mm. Cause her and Apollo, cause he had eight years in prison. It's been at least six or seven years, four or five. I don't know. It's been long enough for her to not be holding on to that. Okay, and we not gonna act like she ain't had sex in all that time. Cause girl, bye. Okay, and you don't have to marry Medina, but you also don't have to treat him like he doesn't matter to you. And you don't have to fulfill anything that he wants. And you don't have to treat him like you're a man. Like, you can't do that. Because if that's the case, then just be single. Let that man go. Even though I think they're not going to more anyway. So we then see Tahiri and Vado. And she tells Vado that, you know what I'm saying, you don't trust Tahiri in the love that she has for you. Because she doesn't seem, you know, as fireworky, you know what I'm saying, with you as she has in the past with other men, okay? And, you know, you have to be able to be a full-fledged man and able, in, in order to stand in the arms of a real woman who's trying to have a real grown-up relationship, okay? Vado brings up, I want the hood here. The hood theory, what does that even mean? I mean, you want her to bust your windows out? You want her fighting every day? Like, what What does the hood theory do for you? Why do you need that and y'all in y'all 40? Something like, y'all don't live in the hood? I hope not. And Terry does. I'm like, you need to grow with me, or or else. Now the judge then asked them, you know, to go and have a conversation. You know, the men talk to the men. You know, women talk to the women. You know, and name one thing that you've seen that they maybe can adjust. You know, in their stuff or whatever. In the kitchen, Hazel instantly goes to Tahiri, you know what I'm saying? As a woman, you know what I'm saying? You should never take your top off in front of other women. Cause, and she's like, girl, you're the only one who felt some kind of way. Like, you're the only one who felt that way. But if you felt some kind of way, I'm sorry, okay? But I don't care about what you wear because I'm not threatened by you. I said, girl, let her know. Hazel's issue was... And, and Willie brought it up. He said, he's, Willie brought it up. He brought it up. He like, you know, Hazel had a point. 
and what she said. However, it was based on her worried about Divine looking at Tahiri. And that's true because then we see this as much as water is wet when Hazel asked Divine, Divine, you thought it was wrong, right? He's like, yeah, yeah, I did. Because he's a backpedaling pussy pop person for Hazel. Now, Tahiri then brings up how everyone here is dressed with a body part out, whether it's ass, cities, or whatever. So, like, everybody is, like, uncovered in some way. So, why is it an issue that she took her jacket off? Okay, now, Phaedra, again, who was in a see-through top and a bra, you know, it says, like, at the end of the day, you know, Hazel should have never went to Vado about the issue. He should have really went to Tahiri because you know that Vado and Tahiri already have issues and you telling him that made them have more issues to make him feel some kind of way. Right, because Hazel is a fool and she's messy. Okay, and she then walks away as a messy bitch that she is. Okay, we then see everybody's in bed late at night, but Hazel, Tahiri, and Divine are in the kitchen hanging out with Krupp. They dancing or whatever, having a good time or whatnot. Tony then come downstairs and she's pissed as always. You know, y'all need to know that he has a disease. Okay, he has a disease. He's sick. Okay, and he hasn't eaten in four days. Okay, eat some food and come to bed. And she kind of walked off and went back upstairs. Now, did she come downstairs mean and rude and ugly? Yes, she did. However, some women are like that with their men. Like, do what I say. Period. Okay? And that's how she came out there. Now, we have seen corrupt, but for the past couple days, he don't like that. And when she tells him what to do, he likes to do the opposite. Okay? So, it pissed him off how she came down there and as he felt, trying to embarrass him, yelling and fussing and cussing or whatever. You got my mama or my doctor. You know, you're my woman. You said, don't come down there and tell him, I ain't got to do shit. I ain't going to bed. And so, to hear he see, okay, Clearly, you know, he ain't, you know, he needs him up, whatever. She calm, you know, well, how about, you know, you go lay down on the couch and just get some rest. And how about that? And then she goes and makes sure that he lays down. Um, she gives him a little blanket or whatever. Because the crap is older. You can tell that he needs someone to be kind to him. And I mean that in the aspect of he needs some compassion in a person like Tony who has dealt with this bullshit for three years, she's not going to get at them because she's already mad and fed up. With Tahiri, the difference, the difference is Tahiri has not had to deal with this bullshit. So she can be nice to him, which helps him do what she's suggesting because she's not being mean about it. Tony is done with the bullshit. And she's like, do it, do it, do it, do it, do it, period. Okay. And so he then listens to Tahiri. He goes and lays down or whatever. And then, you know, because everyone can see he needs help. Corrupt needs rehab again, okay? And that's how it goes off. Now, we do see the fight between Willie and Divine happens next week, so I can't wait for that, okay? Anyway, I don't know how this is so long, honey, but it is what it is. Uh, thanks for tuning in. I am Daily, this is Corner. Peace.